shoulder, uh, shoulder injuries. This just shows you just how much growth is attributed to each one of these bones. 80% of your humerus, your arm bone, comes from this growth plate right here. So if you shut that down prematurely, and you injure that growth plate, you're injuring 80% of the growth of this bone. And that's a pretty big deal. 20% from these elbow regions. So it's a little bit less serious in the elbow, but you know, shoulders are, can be a big issue as well. So, as far as why these injuries occur, usually the first throwers, uh, they can actually lead to permanent rotational deformities. They get uh, lax in the front, stiff in the back, they lose their internal rotation because of chronic torque loads across the shoulder. We'll talk about that in a minute, why that happens. Uh, Fiseal injuries, this is a growth plate injury. Okay, it's just a fancy name for growth plate. Usually the uh, proximal humerus, which is the shoulder bone up here, it's the most common one that's injured. This is usually called Little League Shoulder. Okay, it's coined in 1966. Usually secondary to repetitive uh, movement. Okay, repetitive throwing technique. And it's usually secondary to poor time. Okay. So the diagnosis, as far as like what we see on x ray, this is what I want to show you guys, what, what makes it obvious for us. A lot of people out there, when you go get an x ray, you got to make sure you look at the growth plate. Some doctors may not know what to look for. This is a normal growth plate right here. There's a little sliver of a line here. That means that they got a normal growth plate, they got plenty of growth going in this joint. But we see a lot of space here in that growth plate. There's a lot of pain. They don't want to move their shoulder. That's growth plate injury. So for all intents and purposes, that's a growth plate. Okay. This is what it looks like on MRI. You can see the separation. Okay, this is bone, that's the cartilage, there's the growth plate that's that's, uh, that's separated. And uh, like I said, usually the child presents holding their arm, doesn't want to lift it, and they hurt when you push on it. So treatment's always based on the age and the discomfort. If it's not displaced, like I just showed you, you should put them in sling, uh, no surgery, you know, basically let things calm down, let things heal up, limit their throwing for about eight to 10 weeks, depending on the severity of the fracture. And you gotta let it heal, it's like a broken bone. Sometimes you can get back sooner, but it just depends on the age of the child. If it is angulated or displaced, or, or actually there's a little space there, you, can, you may have to, to fix that. But sometimes if, uh, if they have about four or five years of growth left, they can actually remodel that. You don't necessarily need surgery. So instability. This is another issue we see in kids. Uh, this usually is the most commonly dislocated joint in the extremities, uh, more common than the elbow, the shoulder dislocation. So this is the ball. This is the socket here. So this needs to be on top of that. You want to think of it like a golf ball on a golf tee. Okay? That's that a reduced normal shoulder. You see these in overhead athletes. I see a lot of volleyball players, a lot of swimmers, a lot of pitchers that have issues with the shoulder. Uh, these shoulder issues. Generalized ligaments laxity. What seems to be a mechanical advantage for these, these kids, which is external rotation, and this very lax joint, is also what puts them at risk. So you've got to make sure you're doing the proper exercises to prevent a dislocation or further injury to the shoulder. Uh, this is showing the ball and the socket that I was talking about. And then around it, you've got little bumpers of tissue called a labrum. And sometimes if you have a dislocation of the shoulder, the shoulder pops out the joint, rips off one of these little bumpers here, and that's what we got to fix. So, ball and socket. Do you remember that when you hit the shoulder joint? Here's the ball, here's the socket, that's a normal shoulder. This is out here or out here, that's not. Okay? So, what you're looking for, um, usually the type of instabilities when we see them in the clinics, there's a traumatic, meaning that. I see some patients that can voluntarily pop their shoulder out of joint. They come in and they're like, I can move my shoulder back and forward, I can pop it out of joint. These are atraumatic uh, dislocations. They usually have both shoulders. It's called multidirectional instability. It's you know, lax. The joints are very lax. Uh, usually this is not treated with surgery. It's always there. It's just a matter of strengthening up, up the muscles around the shoulder and stabilizing that joint. The traumatic ones are the ones that are a little bit more serious. It's usually due to a torn labrum, like that bumper I showed you, or a fracture. And it created an instability, and that can usually need surgery, and the older kids especially. This is what a dislocated shoulder looks like. Somebody comes into you, they're playing out here, they fell down, and they've got a shoulder that's drooped down like that. You see this tension here. Compared to the other side, that shoulder's out of joint, and it needs to be popped back in joint. Okay, this is what it looks like on x ray. I showed you guys the golf ball, the golf team. The golf team is popped out of joint. Okay? You've got to get those back immediately. Okay, so 
trainer or somebody like myself needs to be available to talk to the way back in, get them in the emergency room where they can make the phone call back in. So it's just, you just gotta put it in the When I look at a patient that has chronic instability, these are just tests that we do just to evaluate the shoulders, see how relaxed they are. It's painful with any of these motions. Usually that means we've got to get an MRI and some further tests. So treatment, like I mentioned before, if it dislocates, you've got to pop it back in. It's chronic and you have multiple shoulders that are popping out of the joint or both shoulders popping out of the joint. They got loose joints. You gotta get them in therapy, they gotta work bands, work on strengthening, you know, internal rotation, external rotation, really strong before you that shoulder. Rotator cuff strengthening is just like I showed you here in the go over that in a minute. Scapular stabilization, this is something that baseball players need to work on specifically. So if you have a weak scapula or weak uh, muscles underneath the scapula. That whole throws off the whole mechanics of the shoulder, and then you can really injure yourself. Okay, range of motion, core strengthening is also also important. So this is just a basic exercise regarding strengthening exercises. It's really just a matter of isolating the muscle and working with the band. Okay, I typically like resistance bands better than free weights because it's a slower controlled motion, it's less likely to drop on your foot. You just kind of gradually increase the weight as desired. So starting with the back, the scapula is important. What you do with the kids, if you don't work on the back, the scapula stabilizes the muscles. Tell them you're holding the quarter between the shoulder blades and tell them to hold that, pinch it, okay, and then they relax. Pinch it, hold back. That pulls the scapula back, keeps the scapula towards the rib cage so it doesn't flail out, you know, called the winging scapula. That way your shoulder doesn't go into too much external rotation and then you the front of the shoulder. So that's an important exercise. And it's simple, but it's very important. You're using the bands, these are just the bands in different directions. You can find this on the internet, my website has this as well. We're actually going to put a video together showing you how to use these bands. It's really just tying a band to a post, working it one way, the other way, pulling it up, and just isolating each muscle to show it. Okay. Indications for surgery in regards to the shoulder. Well, kids that are skeletally immature, like really young kids that have dislocation, usually they don't do surgery. You don't necessarily need to have to do surgery with these kids. A lot of them will actually heal up okay with the stabilization, and strengthening, and just letting them heal. But if the growth plates, if they mature and then they have a dislocation, and their bone plates are closed, it's your teenagers and adolescents now, then they have a higher rate of dislocation. Okay? So in that case, there's about 80% risk of re dislocation after a traumatic dislocation of the shoulder. Every time that shoulder pops out of joint, it wears down that cartilage even more. So you got a higher risk of arthritis long term. You want to make sure you get it looked at and it keeps on popping out of joint. Multi-directional instability which means voluntarily popping your shoulders out of joint, popping them in. You know, just because these are the kids that can bend their thumb back to the wrist and they've got really loose joints. Strengthening is all you need for that. Okay? Just this physical therapy working on the muscle. Okay? Impingement. Okay? This is actually a, another problem that actually leads to, you see this in pictures primarily, okay? It's mechanical because it's actually something that's physically going wrong within the joint itself. So what happens is that you have a little bit of instability and it ends up creating a stiff, stiffness in the back of the shoulder. So I'll explain that here. It starts with the muscle tendon imbalance. That's what I mean by making sure you do strengthening aspects and working every single musculoskeletal area of the shoulder joint. So if you have one area that's weak, it's gonna overload and it's gonna weaken another area. And then, then you're just completely out of whack and it's gonna injure the rest of the shoulder. So an overloaded posterior capsule, which is the, if you look at the shoulder joint here, shoulder joint's ball and socket. It's in the middle of this rotator cuff here. These are all the muscles that you're working out. This ball is also held in this socket here by an envelope, like a cap, called a capsule. It's underneath this rotator cuff. So when you have somebody that's externally rotating back up there, which is this motion here, and they're constantly doing that, let's say the muscles are in balance. This area in the front becomes more lax, more loose, and then in the back it becomes tighter and constricted. Okay, because these muscles in the back end up compensating more for the muscles in the front. And then you lose internal rotation. So a lot of kids in the pictures I see, they've got a great external rotation for their arm when they go in their cock up. They can reach all the way back here, whereas this one's like this. And in their internal rotation, they only go out here, and this other side down here. So that creates an imbalance in the shoulder, and that creates the problems. So tight, tight posterior capsule, loose anterior capsule, it's cut off, and 
and it basically leads to uh, problems. This is what I'm showing you. This is the ball and socket, this is the capsule here. This is lax in the front, it gets tight in the back. When you go through the copy phase, this is what creates the laxity in the front, meaning the loose in the front of the joint. When you go through the deceleration here, these muscles in the back are firing, trying to keep that shoulder joint from not pulling out. And so they try to hold in place, but it overloads the capsule, the lining in the back, and that lining becomes very thick and irritated, and it becomes tight in the back. So it's these two moves, motions, that end up causing some problems in the shoulder. And then it basically leads to what's called a slack tear. Okay. Now, read about this and hear about it a lot. It's superior labral tear. All it is is where the biceps tendon what we're really looking for right here. It inserts into the joint. I'll show you a picture of it here. Basically what happens is if you think of that biceps tendon, that little middle here in the shoulder, if you go pull the weed out of the ground and rock it back and forth and pop it out of the ground, that's what's happening to the biceps. The constant repetitive movement of the shoulder, pulling on that bicep, pulling it back and forth to the point it weakens and actually pulls off of its insertion site in the bone. Cause a painful popping, clicking sensation when they're thrown. Okay? They'll lose velocity in their pitches, they'll have painful popping sensation in their pitches, and a lot of times they'll have these tight posterior caps that I'm talking about. Okay? More often seen in the older kids, the high school kids. Okay? This is what it looks like in the shoulder. Okay? There's the ball, this is the socket. This is where that noodle like bicep inserts, this is where it rips off. Okay, and this is where the tear occurs. And we have to fix those. Okay, so they don't lose any more velocity. They don't have further degeneration or tearing of those biceps. This is that labrum that I was telling you about, the bumper around the ball and socket. So that biceps goes right all the way around the top. It goes right up top there. Okay. So the key is prevention in this case, okay? Throwing technique. You've got to correct the core mechanics, okay? Trunk rotation occurring too early in the pitch. They're rotating their trunk too early when the rest of the body catches up. And that increases the rotation in the shoulder, creates hyperextension of the shoulder, and overloads the joint. So it has to be a matter of timing. You have to have somebody watch the pitch, make sure somebody's watching their trunk, watching how they throw, make sure it starts with the hand foot, they're rotating their head, and they're falling through with the shoulder. I see kids that all they do is concentrate on their upper body, Everything's like a spring, a good flash in there at the but it's got to start with the feet, it's got to move up, okay? Prevent overload with muscular balance, okay? Don't forget the strengthening exercise that we talked about. Once again, the scapula is important. You get something called the six syndrome, which is the scapula instability, instability of the shoulder blade, and that can also throw the mechanics off as well. So prevention, as far as like, if you do have a kid or a a thrower that already has a tight capsule. One of the arms like this, the other one's like this, and they can't determine the arms. They can't determine rotating any further than that. They've got a great external rotation. They need to work on this internal rotation. They work on stretching out that posterior capsule. The stretch you want to do this is called a sleeper stretch. You're going to lie on their side, prop their elbow up, prop their arm up at 90 degrees, and have to push down on that elbow with the other hand. That stretches out that posterior capsule. This is actually one of that more popular type of stretches out there. Another way to do it is to lean on the elbow across your body, bring it across your front of your body, whatever you can do to stretch out that posterior capsule. These are the same, same exercises here, just showing you different ways of doing it. This is just working on range of motion and well using a bat or a club to get the kids behind your back. These are the safer exercises there to go. So there's some basic exercises there for you to prevent uh, tightness. Vascular problems in the shoulder. You usually see this in old kids. I had a picture the other day that came in to see me in Louisiana, actually. And he has uh, he pitches. These are classic. The pitcher will say, the only way I pitch, I feel numbness and tingling in my fingers, and my hands turn white. And it's only when I pitch. Otherwise, I'm fine. And what's happening is that the nerves and the vessels that actually travel through this little tunnel here in the shoulder, called the thoracic outlet, they're getting pinched. Okay? And uh, it has to do with some tight muscles up top, as well as the first rib down below. And if they keep on having problems with that, sometimes that can lead to vascular occlusion or thrombosis with blood, blood clot forms, and that can become a devastating. 
So you want to catch it early. Luckily, this can be prevented by doing a lot of simple stretching exercises. Very occasionally, surgery is indicated, but the surgery is actually taking out the first rib. So I typically don't recommend it if you can get away with doing the, the therapy and the stretching exercises. Okay? This is just a picture of what I'm talking about. This is the vessels that come through here and the nerves, and they actually go through this tunnel right here. And then you've got the first rib right, right here, too, between these two muscles. When they go into a pitching abduction external rotation in the cocky side here, it pinches off these neurovascular structures that causes that discoloration and that damage, causes that numbness continue. So prevention is the key, just like everything else. You know, prevention is the key. Stretching, muscular balance, like we talked about before, proper mechanics. This is just some basic stretches here. Stretching the neck, it's called scaling stretch. Stretching these muscles that pinch those nerves and vessels. So grab your head and tilt it to the side. Grab your head and tilt to the other side. It stretches out those muscles. Pectoralis stretch. Lean in the doorway, your arms hold it out. Lean forward, that stretches out this area as well. Scapular sweep, like I said before. Fire in the scap in the back there to help uh, stretch it out the front. These are some basic other exercises that you can do here to strengthen the muscles around the shoulder. That's key. You can get by with this with just stretching. Okay.